now let's jump into the retopper room and we'll start with the add split one. So for this one, I just want to draw this polygon. This tool is a little bit slower, so I prefer to use other tools to make it uh, faster. But this one is like a foundation tool, so I can uh, carefully and slowly build something like that. Then if I right click, I can move stuff around. I'll turn off the on plane tool. It was on, just a bit annoying. So you can see it's snapping to the surface along as we do it. And to change, say, additional extrusions, I can drag that slider up and down. It's really more of a visual slider. And then that BS is also uh, kind of like a preview of extrusion in a way. And then we have opacity, just displaying all the opacity to play around with all the transparency. And I can drag the points, I can drag the edges, whatever I need uh, to be doing. Then if I drag it a bit closer to the our symmetry line, which is activated if I go to symmetry and toggle symmetry over there, it will, you can see it will start to snap, right? So you can here modify the amount of snapping. So we can make it really big, really strong, uh, so it will snap really from the middle of the line, a bit too much, so I want to keep it pretty much by default, like 40%, 60%, it's a good value, and it will get combined together. Uh, then we have selection, so I can select vertices, edges, or uh, polygons. And if I press E, I have the menu, either I want to have a circular selection, lasso selection, or rectangular selection, I can pick all of them, or I can use the brush selection, and drag it around. If I press Ctrl, it will deselect everything around, or you can press Ctrl D, it will also drop the selection uh, here. If I press Ctrl D, I can also change, by dragging the, my right, uh, right button, I can change the radio size, so that I can make it bigger and pick everything up, and again, Ctrl, deselect. Uh, there are also some invert tools here. You can essentially put your own hotkeys. And hotkeys in every separate room, they belong to that room. So you can have uh, non-overlapping hotkeys in you know, sculpting. Say D will stay for a few other options uh, uh, than in the retopper room. So make sure you make your hotkeys to speed up your workflow. And press Ctrl D. So select and transform. It's pretty much you're selecting and then you can move stuff around and rotate it and scale it if you want to. Pretty self-explanatory. Also, if you press right click, you can uh, you have all of these options uh, to expand selection, to contract, contract selection. Uh, comes, for example, really handy if you go into select pass and if I press Ctrl D to deselect. Select pass is like an intellig intelligent pass tool. It can uh, go even through dirty geometry if you have only triangles, uh, triangles, angles. It, it will pick it up and try to create a pass. And then I can uh, left click drag it or right click remove a point. And then if I click Enter, it will create a selection, and then I click Shift, right click here for the menu. Can go, say, bevel and create a little path that's been beveled across, which is great. You can create uh, some complicated geometry right there. And then we have Quartz tool. If you click on the edge, then it allows you to kind of draw these polygons out. Uh, helpful for some manual fixes. Still, I would normally use points to polygons tool more than quotes. You can see sometimes it doesn't snap well, like it was happening here. To fix that, I have to go into add split and I have to change the radius of the brush, right? So here uh, I'm going a bit bigger and right click dragging it around so it will snap eventually. Okay, now it got snapped and combined together. I can do this so it will snap. Finally, we made it to points and polygons. I can uh, create a point, I just click, 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 and then right click to fill all, them all up. If I go control, it will create uh, edge loop and super, uh, super quick way of creating your geometry. Uh, sometimes you can have some extra points uh, all around that you need to remove. So if you press shift, right click, you can go and click uh, clear the points. At the top, you can also see some of the uh, 
tools, uh, tool options that you can modify. Uh, but generally, this is really simple, really straightforward tool, uh, fun to use. Uh, usually, one thing to kind of understand, it will always try to create this point in the middle. So if you have some scattered points, you want to navigate in, in, in the middle of this area. And then it can create a point, uh, create a polygon. And then we have a capital. So capital by default will try to create a whole bunch of triangles. If we press shift, it will create a big angle in the middle. I found it a pretty useless tool. What I'd rather use is R fill. R fill will do this really amazing job on intelligently filling the proper topology on your behalf. So you know, one click and it's done, rather than using cap. Cap is more like an old-fashioned tool that honestly should really be removed by now. Strokes tool is another great tool. For that, I want to find some kind of part of the mesh, which I mean, I go into the sculpt tree and just I'll click and isolate the mesh that I need to uh, deal with. So I drag across these strokes. Those are my segments across, and then I have one line, one guiding line. It has to be like in on, inside the mesh. I grow or do it across. The green line is our guideline, and here you can modify the amount of segments. So I'll go for pretty dense. I can type in any number I want, like 66, and then press Enter, and it will create a fairly dense mesh around. It's a really good for any tubular object for arms, legs, handles, all that stuff is, is great for it. Maybe not that great for this particular bit, but it can, all, it can, it can run it through complex meshes. Uh, so let's run here and see if it copes with that or not. So it didn't really cope. It's better to use it against uh, tubes. But at the same time, it didn't really create that many cross sections. That's why it struggled. So now it should do a bit of a better job. So you know, it's not it's not that bad. I'll still probably do it by hand uh, for this part. But if you need to do something really quick uh, on uh, a lot of objects, this is a pretty cool tool to have. And then I'll click on that layer uh, to show all our objects. And we have curves and strokes. I really don't understand that. I will f make a video in, in the future because right now it's not really working for me. And then we have 3D primitives. So with 3D primitives, you can create a cube, uh, just uh, hit apply, and we, and we get a whole bunch of them, right? So uh, 2D primitives, same, for example, if we want to do a cap, uh, create this little circular shape. You can modify the amount of segments, uh, division counts, and such. So let me just undo those parts because we don't really need them. So then we have a knife tool. A knife tool is pretty cool. So knife tool is a, allows you to create the support edge loop. So if I go pick it in the middle and across and hit enter, you can see it created a support edge here. So you want to make it, you want to use it in a mindful manner. You don't want, and now it's kind of snaps to all kind of stuff. So I want to make the radius brush, radius of the brush smaller. Hit enter, we create it. You don't want to do this, you, you know, if you do this, it will just kind of cut through, create a really dirty geometry. It's still trying to cope with and remove the angles and such, but you know, it's not really useful here. So let me just remove, 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 and you know, there you go. It's a great tool for smart uh, edge loop adding. Smart Retopo is a great tool that deserves a separate video because it can be super powerful, especially say like I'm doing here in a vehicle, it can do it, uh, can be like a breeze so wait for the next video the spline the spine tool it will work if you have a selection so we need to pick a selection here so go click on somewhere here and on a couple polygons maybe maybe one more then i click on the spine tool and now if i just click around it's our kind of lever so i can use this to extrude and move this around to create a bridge, I can modify the segments quantity, uh, hit enter. It will try to then finish the whole bridge down to the surface. Uh, again, we can create pretty complex surfaces with that, and it's really easy and intuitive to use. It's just a gizmo. You can put it around and you know, modify. And let me undo all that stuff. Then we have the free extrude. Again, I want to pick something else. I want to pick some of these but uh, some of these polygons. Go free extrude, and just drag it out. Uh, click enter, drag it out. Click enter, drag it out. So you can see there is something going on in the middle just because of the mirror snapping. It starts to really break apart the uh, extrusions uh, process. But otherwise, 
Uh, it's pretty straightforward extrusion. You really want to put a hotkey there uh, on those, some, some of these buttons because that will then obviously speed you up a lot more. Free moving is pretty much the same as select and transform, so there's not much uh, stuff to talk about. You can just free move the polygons. Make joints is more for 3D printing. I don't really see a point of it to be there for topology, so we can just disregard that particular button.